Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, how's it going there, there everybody? everybody? Welcome, Welcome back to Switch, Switch to Linux. Linux. We, we had just, just a moment's, moment's delay, delay there. there. We were getting, getting the last couple of folks jumping on, on here. here. We, we have emails, emails with, with Gmail, Gmail not, not liking, liking people running, running their own, own email, email servers. servers. But that's, but that's okay. okay. All right, All right. So, so anyway, uh, we, we are back, back to a life in Linux, Linux today, today and, and our topic is, is how did you first, you first come, come to Linux? Linux. So, so we're going to let each one of the panelists, panelists discuss, discuss that and talk, talk about what Linux, Linux distros we're using. using. We, have we have a variety, variety. We, have we have a Fedora, Fedora user, user, we have, we have an Arch user, user, we have an Ubuntu user, user, and we have a Mint user. Whoa, we have Echo. That's probably me. Give me a second. There we go. Echo, Echo was me. Echo was me. <laughs> I don't think anybody, anybody else heard of that. that. All right. All right. So, so uh, we, have we have our, our panelists, panelists all day. We, we I asked uh, Dan, Dan, Joe, Joe Quint, Quint, Tim, Tim, and Ricky, Ricky uh, to, jump to jump on here to, to talk, talk about how we all first, first came, came to run, run Linux. Linux. And, and so, so I think what I think we're going to do is first, first we'll, we'll kind of just kind of go in a series of you're appearing on my screen. So that means Dan, you are up first, Dan. How did you first come to use Linux? Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hold, hold, hold on, on a, a second, second, Dan. Um, um, uh, give, me uh, give me an audio, audio check. check. Dan, Dan, keep going. Keep going. Okay, okay. Um, um, guys, 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 hold on. on. My, my audio, audio is uh, uh, for some, some reason, reason not following, following through correctly, correctly on, on, uh, on, OBS, on OBS. On you guys, so give, me, give me a second. I just, just caught that, that now, so give me a moment. moment. So my, so my apologies, apologies everybody. everybody. Apparently, we're not quite as ready on audio as we were hoping we are. Okay, I'm going to disable that. Okay. Oh, my lordy. It's one of those days, folks. It's one of those days. Okay. There. Now I'm muted. Okay. Audio. Okay, check, check. Check. This is a test. Testing one, two, three. Okay, check, check, check. Hey, I think we got it. We got it. We got it. <laughs> I think we're good. Uh, confirm and chat. Confirm and chat. Hello in chat. Are you out there? Check, check, check. Are we good check. in chat? We're just going to give it just about 30 seconds or so to confirm. Good check. The check is in good. the mail. Echo is off now. Echo is off now. And I think we are. Uh, hey, we're all good. Woohoo! We are all good. <laughs> I did not catch that, apparently. I usually try and catch that before we start. So, Dan, you're up again. Um, so, uh, sorry about having to repeat all yourself, but go ahead. You want me to start over? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Nobody could hear you. <laughs> okay, well, back in 2005, I had tried Fedora 4, and I have 5 and 6 and stuff like that as well. They seem to release every six months. Um, well, anyways... I had a small server running in my basement where people could access and swap files, and um, it was run by an Apache server client or host, and it was all basically set up with text files and all that, and you had to do a lot of reading, but the problem with that was back then is that Linux just could not do what Windows had was able to do as far as software and things that are available and you know, all that stuff, and especially with the iPod craze, the MP3 craze, the Microsoft Zoom craze, and all that stuff, required Windows or a Mac to operate that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I drifted back into Windows and sat there until about the beginning of this year in March. And before that, I had, I had a machine, I have a machine that still runs Windows 7, but when they were giving out Windows 10 for free, I downloaded the free copy and I, I put it on another drive. 
I put another drive in the machine and went to install it. And I got stopped by this user agreement. And I started looking at it. I started looking at it. I got up and went and got, and got a coffee and took a break and then looked at it some more. And I'm like, there ain't no way on earth I'm going to agree into all this stuff. <laughs> so yeah. that was like two years ago at least. Cool. So I, I, I decided I'm going to put the Windows 10 on the back burner and just see where it goes. Well, up until um, March of this year, I'm like, I'm going to give Linux a try. So I started fishing around on the internet and doing some reading and seeing what was out there and was just about where do I start with the distro? There's so many of them. Yep. Um, it seemed to be the consensus was if you're going to start out brand new, choose something like Ubuntu or Mint or Peppermint. So I got a copy of a Mint Cinnamon, installed yep. it, installed all the toys, found some toys that would work the same as my old toys and um being these days i don't need all the software requirements that i used to i really don't do much writing i hardly ever use office um i do a lot of work with mp3s and music and stuff like that all the free software in the world's available in linux for that it seems like when they made it for windows they also made a linux version um, if you used MP3 tag to do all your tagging and your um, MP3s to set them up and everything, there's a thing in Linux called Puddle Tag that'll do the same thing. It's even laid out the, exactly the same. Um, so I played around with uh, using the Linux Mint for a while, and I was really happy with it. And I stuck with it for quite a while. And then I started to get a little bored with it. It, and I wanted to see what else was out there. Then I got hung up on this Manjaro thing. I really liked Manjaro, but I could not get it to stick. And um, I'd get it in a machine, set it up just the way I'd want it, an update or something to come along, and just blow it out of the water. And that happened to me a couple of times. And luckily, I, thanks to Clonezilla, I was able to clone my distribution of Linux Mint and stuff it in a drawer for a rainy day in case I had to go back a step. And that happened a couple times and I haven't um, I tried um, when the Ubuntu 18.10 came out I got the beta version. I was playing with that and I just about moved into it and then I found out there was no upgrade path to go to the official version. So I just backed up everything, wiped that out, and went to the LTS version 1804. And that's what I'm currently using right now to talk to you guys. But since then, I've downloaded Manjaro 18. Um, I've tried that. That has some bugs in it. I get the feeling like they put it together, installed a bunch of software in it to test it, and then it didn't take it all out because... It's not in the menus or anything, but you go to install something like, let's say, Mumble. It won't install Mumble because there's a piece of an icon in the users folder and in, in, in high color that's there that it can't get out of there to put a new one in. Wow. So you have to go fish this stuff out to install it. So I, had, I really wanted to love Manjaro, but it just really didn't want to love me back. So <laughs> yeah, some, some people say that, yeah. <laughs> so here I am on Ubuntu 1804 Mate. I got it set up in the Redmond mode, so it works much like Cinnamon does. Okay. It's got the bar at the bottom and the menu just like Cinnamon, and it's great. It's been bulletproof. And there it works with all my hardware. There you go. And that's kind of one of those secrets is you might have to, you'll hear here as we go through with different people with different stories, how they came to Linux. And what's important is there is no one distro that's going to work perfectly for everybody. You're just going to have to experiment a little bit. Um, so he's found uh, Ubuntu Mate, which I found a few issues that don't work with my particular workflow with that, but mm, that's okay. I also noticed with Manjaro 18, it tend to run my processor quite a bit warmer than Ubuntu does for some mm -hmm. reason. 
Yeah. And I can tell that immediately because I, I don't have no sides on my, uh, my case to my computer. It's wide open. And boy, when that fan kicks up, it blows out some hot air on my leg. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Hey, hey you, at least you have a heater for the cold weather. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, okay. any, any final words on, uh, on your part story part? All right. Uh, Joe, we'll go over to you. Give the floor to you. Okay. Um, mine's probably not going to be quite as in-depth, in I wouldn't think. But I started back, and this is actually I had to think about it. And I know I always said uh, it was Ubuntu 6.04, but I believe it was actually 6.06. .06. It was the one of the few releases back in 2006 um, that actually had a, kind of an odd even number if you know what i mean by that it's not within mm -hmm. an old four it wasn't a 10 release um and i i think i tried it just because i had an old hp i want to say i think it was a pavilion or something like that that i had a power supply went bad on it uh, i got sick of reloading windows you know it seemed like every time i turned around somebody was getting it, we used to keep it actually uh, in the kitchen area so it was kind of a community computer and every time I turned around, somebody was getting a virus on it, mm. you know, and I just got to the point where I, I said enough's enough. And, and I, I had known about Linux long before that, a number of years before that. But I thought maybe it was time to finally start giving it a look because I had started to see more uh, tech stories on it and releases popping up and things like that. And so I decided to install that one. And uh, actually, I was I was pleasantly surprised. It was a completely different animal compared to what you're used to and of course the family's looking at it going what is this but then once they got used to it they actually kind of liked it the one thing i remember most about it in comparison to today's world was you had to have in, in essence a windows computer in order to set up uh it actually create a, a boot iso or, or a dvd mm -hmm. back then or cd let me even say that cd it wasn't even a dvd it was a cd um, and sometimes it was more than one CD, if I remember right. But usually you could get it on one CD. I don't even think you could do it on a flash drive that early, or at least I didn't try. Again, my memory isn't the best on it, but I remember doing it with CDs. And you had to put a Ruby, you know, uh, file in there, and then you had to basically get all the components and put them together in there. And sometimes it was hit or miss on whether they worked. But uh, it was really kind of like the coolest thing. And then I remember it was probably... A period after that, I went. I tried Fedora uh, back then, and I actually really liked it. And I'm guessing I'm going to say it was Fedora 10, but it might have even been earlier than that. Um, and I, I just thought that that worked really well. And of course, Fedora back then was a different animal than what it is now. Um, and then for the longest time, I just really didn't do much with Linux after that. And um, in later years, when we started getting into when uh, I think it was even Windows 7 got released, you know, it took me a while to jump up to that. I was reluctant to go from XP to Windows 7. And the reason why I was sticking with that when I finally did is I really liked it was because of some design software needs I had. I, used, I actually loaded it on a laptop that I still have in this cabinet here. That when I was a contractor, I would take that laptop with me if I had to bring my plans up, that kind of thing. But, of course, now my needs have changed again because... I am basically, for all intents and purposes, retired, even though I haven't officially done it. I, I theoretically am. I just, you know, my um, health issues have changed my life, and I had to just make a decision. So, um, but kind of like, I think you're going to see a common thread here, much like Dan and others. In 15, when I started hearing all about Windows 10, even before it was the free release offered and stuff when i started hearing about all the data mining and all the different changes that they were doing to it um it frustrated me i think looking at the the operating system as a whole for what it could be or you know if they if they did it old school or if it was just an operating system you load it up you put your software in you did your work it'd be one thing but because of the the business model they have and things like that i, I just said there is no way uh, so I do still have a Windows machine sitting here, as I've said many times before on other threads or streams. Uh, I keep it like a lot of people because I have to have it for my accounting. Um, I just don't trust trying to use the open source stuff at this point, uh, like a new cache or whatever. And yet I know businesses in my area that use that and they run it just fine. But mm -hmm. to get that set up 
and then also to get that uh, to where it would work with my accountant and stuff. So for me, it's easier just to keep QuickBooks yeah. on a separate machine, which mm -hmm. I do not go online. If I do, it's for literally seconds or a minute. You know, if I have to run something to the printer initially or just a mm -hmm. brief moment for something. But even at that, I can't count on one hand how many times I put that machine online. It literally stays offline. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was it was when Windows 10 got, you know, was coming out that I decided, no, I'm going to do this full time. And I did like like everybody else. I had Linux Mint, but I liked Mate. I just for some reason favored a Mate menu. Uh, mm -hmm. Not that Cinnamon was a problem. Cinnamon, I had Cinnamon for a while, too, initially. And then I thought, let me try experimenting with some different uh, um, menus. And then, of course, one of the things about Linux, when you get addicted to it or become an enthusiast of it, you can't ever leave it alone until you break something, which is what I did. I, you know, <laughs> the kernels and things like that, and you know, and that's part of the learning process. And I still have a long way to go to learn, you know, on here, even compared to many of you guys. I mean, I'm not by any means a newbie, but I'm certainly not seasoned. I, I don't consider myself seasoned. Let's put it that way. Although I guess three years in of using it as a daily driver. Now I keep saying a year, and I forget how much time passed. But I mean, think about Windows 10 got released in 15. You know, so or excuse me, XP XP was end of life in fifteen, and, and I think ten was coming into the picture then, if I remember right. Yeah, but, right around sixteen. So yeah, so so yeah. far, two of us are uh, converts to Linux because of Windows ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, you know, I thought let me start making the switch, and I went through a number of distros. I won't go through the whole list. The last one before the one I'm on now was Ubuntu Studio. I tried that just for more for curiosity and, you know, but I, like a lot of people, I'm getting, I'm, I'm kind of getting tired of hopping, especially on my main machine. That's why I decided to buy a test laptop and, and use that to throw different distros on. This way I leave my main machine alone. Now I'm, I'm currently on Ubuntu Mate 18.04.1. Uh, is it perfect? By no means. One of the things that actually is an ongoing bug that it seems to have happened recently was you know, uh, the, the control center, you bring it up and I can't scroll all the way to the, down. You hit the, the bottom of it. You have to expand it in order to get it to go down. Apparently that's happened on other things. You know, I could go through the list of bugs. We're not going to do that. It's just how we got here, I guess, mainly was the road you're mm -hmm. looking to find out. And for me, I, I'm on this probably 99.5% of the time. I really am on that computer very rarely it's you know once a week once a month sometimes that is all i'm on here to do my accounting and i have peppermint in peppermint nine in another room on a little cube computer i built for uh and that does have windows 10 i originally built that to sell that computer as a spec machine and i just decided to keep it for myself i've left windows 10 on there i don't use it I just leave it on there if I have to service somebody's machine for them or whatever, and I need to go in and check some things on Windows 10, I have the availability because I have a machine here if I need it. That's the only reason it's on there. But even at that, that stays offline. That does not go online. And so I put Peppermint on there. I use that for my resale, my little resale business I put, puts with and any other computer things. And I absolutely love it. I, I love Peppermint too. I mean, Peppermint's great for, you know, a light, fast mm -hmm you know, work. And I like customizability. That's why I'm favoring that over GNOME. Uh, I did use GNOME briefly for a while too, but you know, that's it. That's pretty much the gist. All right. Very good. Very good. Um, let's see. I believe Quint, you are next. Yeah. My dad decided to leave. Oh. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. We bored him. So, yeah. So basically. Give him some headphones so we can hear. All right. Go ahead. Yeah. Back in 2014, it was Christmas of 2014, I received a Raspberry Pi for Christmas. Um, and so it came, it was part of a kit called the Cano Kit, which it was basically designed to make the Raspberry Pi like easier for like kids to program and stuff. And it came with a Raspbian based operating system called Cano, or called Cano OS. And so I thought it was I thought it was really cool. Like it, it was cool to see something that wasn't Windows because that's what I had at the time. If you remember, I, I was only ten years old at this point, so. But it was just cool to see something that wasn't Windows or Mac because that's what I had grown up using. And so I played with that a little bit, and then probably it wasn't until I put that away for a long time, and it wasn't until 2016 when I decided to get it out again. 
And this time I started looking up what was in it. Um, and then I discovered the whole thing about the Raspberry Pi and that I, I put Raspbian on it. I played with that. And I learned what Linux was. Yeah, it was just, that was when I sort of, that was my first step into Linux. But then I sort of got bored of that because it was a Raspberry Pi and it was slow. So that's when I decided to try desktop Linux. So I had a MacBook Air at this point with only four gigs of RAM. So I decided to take the risk and installing virtual box on it with a very low amount of RAM. And I'm, I threw up, a, I downloaded an Ubuntu 16, or I looked up a lot of stuff on how to use it and how to use Ubuntu and everything. So I downloaded an Ubuntu 1604 ISO and then I threw that in a VM. And then I, that's, that was sort of my first experience with desktop Linux. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. And I can't believe this is absolutely free. So after that, I started distro hopping. And so I went from, I guess, yeah, I didn't really like Unity all that much. So I guess uh, after that, I went to um, Ubuntu GNOME, I believe. And then that's when I discovered my love for GNOME because it felt a lot like a Mac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which the vanilla gnome will point out for people just jumping in doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. Yeah, that was when vanilla gnome existed on yeah. Ubuntu. Um, so then after that, I started playing. I never used Linux Mint because I looked at a picture and I thought that that was that was that it was looked very hideous. Oh, I'm sorry for you. you guys watching. Who you <laughs> but I looked at it, and I was like, this is not pretty at all. It's not modern looking. Let's let's you know say that much. But it's yeah, not. I think quite it depends Windows on how you looking. theme that, really. But. It just didn't look nice to me. It's okay. I, I respect that you guys like it, but it was just not yeah. what it was just not my taste. Mm -hmm. So then I just started playing. I started playing with um, other distros. Like I went. I tried a bunch. I tried Debian. I tried Zorin OS. I tried, I'm trying to think what else, I think I tried a few, I tried KDE Neon, that was my first experience with KDE, and then um, I never really looked into XFCE, once again, it just didn't, it wasn't my taste, like it didn't have that modern feel like Gnome and KDE did, and I didn't just, I didn't really like KDE, it was just, it felt too much like Windows, and that's not what I was used to. So after that, I finally came across Fedora after going over a bunch of distros. I can't even remember how many I tested, but I finally came over to Fedora and I thought it was Fedora 26. I installed this in a VM and I, I was like, wow, this is nice. I really like DNF. I thought it was a great package manager and I still do. I liked how I got all the latest versions of packages. And I liked, um, I just really liked Fedora. Like it was just, it was just, I figured out that's when my, per when, that's when I found my, per my perfect distro. So this was probably about 27, this was probably about middle of 2017. So then after that, I, I really wanted some real hardware to test Linux on. So that's when I got a, um, a laptop. I got a cheap $200 laptop for Christmas so I could install Fedora on it. And that was my first experience with Linux on real hardware other than the Raspberry Pi. So, so yeah, after that, that's when I start, I started, I built this computer. I never really changed distros. Like I knew that that was my distro. Like I didn't distro hop anymore. So. I really wanted a workstation computer because I didn't have any powerful computers at the time. So, um, about, so I, I decided to build the computer that I'm currently on. I took an old, I took an old Lenovo computer from 2011 and I put all, it was a think station. I put all these new parts in it and it's amazing. And now, that's my and then after that I found I wanted to, I wasn't like deep into the community like I was very I wanted to get into the community now that I learned all this stuff so that's when I discovered switch to Linux and that's how it's been since I discovered switch to Linux that's about it 
And somehow we have not managed to get you on their Linux Mint yet. I mean, <laughs> no, it is really awesome that you use Fedora. Because those, those guys that are new, Fedora is not necessarily one the new folks necessarily want to use right out of the gate. There are some more hurdles to get it set up. Uh, but Quint's done a really good job. And actually, if you need my help getting it set up, I'm going to point you towards Quint or Fast Gadgets. Both of those two run Fedora. <laughs> so uh, it's a really good distro. It's just one that takes a little bit extra configuration. So, I mean, my hat's off to you for being able to run yeah. it because it's that's actually really, really impressive. We get through some through everybody. I got a news article I just remembered I came across about a year ago. I'd like sure. to kind of share something. Yeah, on it. remind us at the end there. Um, Quint, any final words on yours? Um, there was something I was going to say. Um, I can't remember now. There was something I was going to say. Yeah, I tried. I'm trying to think. Um, it was something about Fedora, but I can't remember now. Oh, it was because I wanted it. Another reason why I wanted it was because it had the vanilla GNOME experience. Mm -hmm. And by that time, their Ubuntu had put out their had switched to GNOME from Unity, and I didn't like their customizations to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you like I'm, the way GNOME looks out of the box, you probably won't like how it looks on Ubuntu. For sure. I don't like the way Ubuntu looked. I never did. I thought it was so ugly looking. Yeah. But I, it I still looked better than... You, but, the but, GNOME version is. But it still looked better than Linux Mint and, and, mm -hmm. um, and LXDE, in my opinion. <laughs> Your GNOME version of Fedora looks very polished compared yeah. to what they give you with Ubuntu. Yeah. Yeah. Every, the only thing I've noticed that's different is that there are Fedora logos. Pretty much mm -hmm. everything else is stock. Yeah. Okay. Um, ben we're just joined go, us. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, Ben. I will go. We're going to do. Uh, we'll go through the rest of these guys in row, and then Ben, you you can jump in after Ricky. So. Um, Tim, you're up. Well, I came to Linux in about uh, 2010. I jumped, um, I kind of jumped the Windows ship. I had a small netbook that I was using as a primary machine at the time, and it had, I think, Windows something starter, I think Windows 7 starter. And I had been exposed to Linux um, probably about seven or eight years prior to that. And I wanted to get rid of the Windows, the whole Windows thing. I didn't, professionally, I wasn't in any need to use Windows any longer, um, at least away from an office at that point. So I grabbed uh, Ubuntu. Again, I always get confused as to which version it was that they switched from GNOME 2 to Unity. I, I, I started using um, Ubuntu, the last version prior to the switch to Unity. So I think that was 10. 10. I think. Yes, that's right. So um, I started using that, and it did everything I needed. I mean, there were a couple of niggles. Um, big thing back then was getting wireless cards to work, and you know, I kind of fought with that. But you know, I, I don't. You know, maybe fight is the wrong word. I gained a lot of experience um, from putting together. Uh, putting together the distro and getting everything on my specific hardware to work at the time. After that, I, you know, because I started with Ubuntu, I always, I always gravitated back to Ubuntu. I went through my whole stage of distro hopping and trying this, trying that. And, you know, the distros that I've settled on the most when I've kind of gone away from the Ubuntu side of life, um, predominantly have been uh, distros that are Deb based. Um, for package management, just because I got used to the command line in uh, administrating distros like that. Um, I spent, I, and I, this like Clive, I tend to be more of a GNOME guy. I kind of like that look. I like that feel. Um, I think the GNOME, the vanilla GNOME desktop is actually looking a little bit, a little bit dated to me. Um, plus, on top of that, there's a lot of extensions you have to add into it. In, in, in a lot of cases, there's a lot of extensions you have to add into it. But um, my transition in distros went from uh, Ubuntu with the GNOME 2 desktop to the Unity desktop. Then I gravitated towards uh, Linux Mint 
I uh, used that with the Mate desktop for quite a long time. And then uh, would have been Ubuntu GNOME prior to um, Ubuntu switching into GNOME. That would have been like 2013, 2014. Um, tried a bunch of different distros along the way, um, Deepin, uh, Elementary. Uh, I haven't strayed onto the side of life with RPM-based distros that that often. I did use OpenSUSE for a little bit. Um, used Fedora. I played around with Fedora, you know, here and there. But um, right now, I've settled on Linux Mint. Um, it just seems to work with the hardware that I've got. Um, I've been able to customize it to the point that I like it, which is a little bit easier to do than it would be with Ubuntu, with the Ubuntu desktop or their, their version of the GNOME desktop. Um, and for me, it's always been whatever works the best on my hardware. Uh, I run into problems, or I have been folks that, that have seen me on other, other channels or on Tom's channel here. There's, this, there's something goofy with just... The one laptop that I that I have Linux on here that I use predominantly, there's just something weird with it. Um, uh, trying to use Hangouts, and that's the only hang-up I have. Hmm. But Linux Mint works perfectly well for everything that I need. I don't have any professional requirements as such anymore that I need to use any specific operating system. So um, sticking with Linux is kind of my deal. In fact, the laptop that I have in front of me when I got it um, last, it was it, close to a year, well, last January or February, when I opened it up, I did not even boot into Windows 10, which is what this machine came with. Um, I had I burnt my jump drive uh, well in advance, and um, at that point, I think I put uh, I think I put Elementary on it mm -hmm. as the first thing, and um, that's kind of how it uh, kind of how it stayed for a number of months. But um, as far as any closing thoughts, you know, L Linux is an acquired taste, as in, you know, if you're using Windows, if you have a certain application that you like using for a certain task, you're going to acquire a taste or gravitate towards one. Um, I see Linux as, as, as kind of the same thing, except with Linux, I don't have to gravitate towards a single app. I can actually change my preferences all the way across the board as far as the OS is concerned, meaning I can get a different desktop environment, I can get a different package management system. Um, some of the distros are a little bit tougher to you know, acclimate to. Um, for instance, Elementary. It's a great distro. I think uh, it's really good for, for newbie type, guy, type folks um, because it does have some lockdown uh, pieces to it. So you can't really bust anything right off of the bat. Um, I've been lucky. Uh, essentially in it that I really haven't busted a distro on my own. Um, mm -hmm. I did try Manjaro for a while, you know, played it, kind of screwed around with that. And, uh, you know, didn't do the updates, and then updates would come through. Too many of them, something would bust, and then, ah, oh, crap. But any, you know, the few times that that's happened to me, I've went, okay, I had fun with, it was fun while it lasted. The love affair is over. I get my jump stick that's got Linux, Mint, or Ubuntu on it. I throw that in. And I reinstall because you can reinstall a distro within, at least on my hardware in most cases, less than a half hour. And then another half hour of getting everything into it that I want or need in my day to day interactions with the computer. Hmm. But. Okay. And you haven't lived until you broke a distro and then even fixed it. That's even better. Okay. Yes. You know, um, the, the, I, I would have I would have liked to have tried to do that a little bit more, Joe, but it this to me, it just. It's, and it only happened with with um, arch based distros, and for me the only drawback was the only drawback that I had was trying to get answers, friendly answers, yeah. from friendly yeah. people on forums that really had a really had an attitude of wanting to help. And the reality is, it's easier to just reload them, reinstall them. It is. Yeah. It with is. arch based distros I found when they break and they break good, you can't even get back into them to do anything with them. I think Ben might be able to say some more about that, so we'll let him answer that in a minute. Um I did have a question come through. I just caught my eye. Uh flat uh question for you. Flatbed scanners I want to get a good one. What does I guess what does that negatives? 
appears Epson will work, but maybe not. I don't wish to take a 200 chance. Any ideas? Well, first, as far as just out of the box, simple plug and play, I have always found Epson scanners to work the best out of the box with Linux. Generally, you don't even have to fight with them. Uh, Brother scanners. Well, I love Brother printers. The scanners are a pain. You can get them to work. You usually have to download drivers. Uh, But the best thing to do is look for what Epson scanners are available and then just Type in uh, onto a internet search for that model and Linux and see what shows up. That's going to tell you pretty well if it works or if it's going to be, give you a nightmare. So that's the, the, that's the thing. If you're looking at buying hardware and you know you want to do Linux, do your research. Because not all hardware will work with all Linux and not all Linux will work with all hardware. So you just want to do some, some research to figure out what you want to do. Um, and Ricky, we're up to you if you're ready. Yep, I am. Okay, basically, uh, my Linux journey is very simple. Uh, Basically, I started uh, using, uh, I started experimenting with Linux, like, pretty much at the beginning of this year. Um, I was pretty much still, and always was, until I completely switched over a Windows user. I used Windows from... I would say from either ME or 2000, like which one, but all the way up to Windows 10. Then uh, once I hit Windows 10, um, um, I was pretty much doing, watch some YouTube videos around that time, and I stumbled upon your channel, Tom. (laughs) And uh, basically, that's when I found out all the data collection and all that stuff. So that's when I started experimenting with dual booting. Uh, My dual booting attempts were very successful at first. The first Linux disk I ever used was Peppermint 8, which I'm reinstalling onto this uh, laptop back here at some point. Um, Then from uh, Peppermint 8, I started to experiment with Ubuntu. I pretty much, um, I I experimented with a whole bunch of flavors, but um, the one flavor I stuck with the most for a long, long time was Unity. I mean, Unity was so simple and easy for me to use. I knew how it worked the the minute I I saw it. and then from Ubuntu Unity, um, I jumped over to uh, Linux Mint uh, from time to time. I used Cinnamon, XFCE, Mate. Then um, basically that all led to me experimenting uh, with Arch. Um, and I haven't looked back since. Arch is my main environment. I use Arch Labs XFCE and it, it, it's really good. And that, and that Pretty much in a nutshell is my Linux journey, basically. All right. Very good. Very cool. Um, Ben, you're up. All right. Well, my journey begins in about 2008, and I was just browsing the Internet looking for something to do, and I got on this talk shoe uh, call way back in the day when I was a computer newbieist. Didn't know what the heck he was doing, where the hell to go, nothing like that. Didn't know anything about operating systems was just a class act newbie and i went into this just use linux uh, usa computer tech chat room and called in and said hey guys what's going on and they were talking about linux and i was like what the heck is this linux thing and i dug into more about it called up the host and said hey uh, i'm trying to install your operating system on my computer can you help and then he sort of dug around, helped me out, and sort of gave me some backbone. And I uh, have loved it ever since. And it was about the time around 11.04, around the time Tim started with Linux, that I got into uh, Gen 2, of all things, and loved GNOME 2 ever since. And um, unfortunately, I didn't really get a chance to mess with it very much. But... That's solely because around the time I started using Gen 2, GNOME 2 was being phased out, unbeknownst to me, and that's when I started playing around with XFCE and other GUIs and distros and things like that. And ever since then, I've sort of developed a love for Linux, and it, uh, I will say it does get 
frustrating sometimes, but you know, you just got to bite the bullet and just keep playing with it. And uh, Tom, I know you know about this, but last night I was playing with Linux from scratch of all things, which um, unfortunately blew itself up in my face because I was trying to put a uh, package manager on top of it, but <laughs> um, I'm starting over with a package manager by default. And, hope, and hopefully that won't be such a perilous task. But yeah, my, uh, like everyone else here, it basically started with an Ubuntu base. So uh, yeah, that's kind of my history in Linux is like everybody else. You got to start with... Uh, it's Ubuntu, the ultimate gateway drug. Yeah, right? but that's just, <laughs> once, you, once you start... Yeah, once you go Linux, in my opinion, you just, you just don't go back, so... Yeah, and I'm actually in the process of um, converting my MacBook to Linux. Actually, <laughs> yeah. And what uh, what distro are you running right now? Um, well, I haven't actually converted my power over to it yet, but that's probably going to happen sometime tonight. And I'm thinking of going with my own Arch Spin Hackman. <laughs> okay. There you go. That's a good yeah. idea. Yeah, because it's actually on my jump drive right now, and God, I need to update that thing at some point, because I'm looking at the update manager right now on the XFC menu bar. It has over 600 updates. Wow. Yeah, this thing needs a new ISO, I think. <laughs> it, hasn't, yeah. it hasn't been patched in a heck of a long time. <laughs> so yeah, I think it's time for a, uh, a remake at, at some point, so yeah. We well, have people out there that have hack, man, that it is updating all the time, so they don't get 600 updates. Isn't that true? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, I really don't need to rebuild it, but I think it is it is due for a little a little update. But I'll, I'll worry about that later. But yeah, it is um, it is um, it is the ISO is a couple months old, but I'm just gonna do it like once every six months to a year. But yeah. It's uh, it might be time to, to throw out an update. But what package manager did you try to install, Ben? On um, on your Linux from scratch. On my LFS, what it well, it started with Portage, which went a little south because I didn't have the profiles in there. But then I tried Yum and DNF, that was a loss. And then I tried to do apt from Debian and Ubuntu. And one of the packages I installed with DPKG blew it up. So, so nothing worked. No, and because LFS is so picky, it um, some stuff got conflicted, I guess, and then it just accidentally crashed. So, um, because I kept getting kernel panics, and then when I tried to re to re to revive it, it it just made it even worse. So basically, um. I did successfully re root into it, but it was just a lost cause trying to fix it. So I'm going to start over with this uh, GitHub page that has a pre-built or uh, that tells you how to install it with dpackage. So hopefully that will work better. So. Okay. Are we talking about Are we talking about Ben's experiences with uh, Linux from scratch? Yeah, yeah. What yeah. I'm doing. Uh, Quint and, asked about what I, Oh, there he goes. Oh, Tim's got the <laughs> frying pan back. I, I'm, right. ready. I'm ready, Ben. So, you, just, oh, you tell me when things go kaboom and I'll whack myself. Now, Ben, you should probably, with like Manjaro does, is they don't let their um, package, they don't let their ISO get so far out to where it needs 600 updates. Yeah, that's it might be I'm wise thinking. to download them all into your um your main uh, distro that you're using to put on uh, on SourceForge and update it and have a fresh update. So when someone gets your hack, man, it don't need 400 updates when they install it. Yeah, I'm can probably going to yeah, ask a quick question? tomorrow or something. I'm going to install it and then push out a new ISO so that way when people download it, they're like, holy crap, all these updates. <laughs> Yeah. I kind of have a have a question. Um, now, Linux from scratch. Essentially, what you're doing is is when you start Linux from scratch. Yeah. Um, take take it for granted. I, I'm a user and maybe bordering yeah. on a little bit of a power user. 
the stuff people like Ben and Quint and and a lot of the other folks do on there, yeah. I, I'm not even close to anything I would even want to try. But Linux from scratch, you essentially aren't really downloading an OS. You kind of just start out with a set of instructions yeah. on how to pull things in, put them in the right spot, do it in the right order. So at the end yeah. of the end of be it the end of be it a day or an hour or a week you end up having you end up having a working a working living breathing linux distribution that you right. okay. you're right so it's basically building a linux system from zero it is okay okay yeah. i just wanted to make sure yeah thank it's you essentially building linux from nothing but source tarballs that's it wow. and uh if I if I pull up my screen for a brief minute, uh, go on this. Um, I'm going to stick any questions so we don't miss them in the Google okay. chat here. So if you guys see it, um, and I want to I want to acknowledge uh, Joe's super chat. Thank you very much for that, and also Paul. Uh, Five dollar super chat, great topic. Thank you very much. We try and keep good, relevant topics. We had a toss up whether the, this topic or the other one on a potential list is what works and and on what hardware. We're gonna wait until toss is available for one of these to do that as well. Exactly. Um, and as you guys can see here, this is the LFS book, and it's it's basically hundreds and hundreds of pages of just building a Linux system from bare bones, nada. I mean, it's it's a lot of work, and it, it essentially is not for noobs. It's it's something you do if you really want to learn how Linux is built, the core, the whole shebang. And there is, I've done it many times, and if you do it, be prepared to almost want to. I mean, I'm not going to try and get too dramatic, but it'll, it is frustrating, but you do learn a lot. You do, it, it, it is prone to break very easily if you don't know what you're doing. And if you don't say copy and paste this stuff, you, you're going to, you're going to mess up and you will make typos. And it's, it's, it, I would just recommend it because sure, in other tutorials about it and things, they will tell you to not do that, but in my experience, it's it's very easy to mess up your typing and things like that. So if you don't know what you're doing, just 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 paste it because it'll. Yeah. Ben, when it's completed and all done, what distro? What what's what distro can you compare it to when it's finished? Well, I don't know if there's really. But it's thing. what's it's most like. What it's most like is maybe Gen 2 or Slackware minus the package handling. It's mostly comparable to Slackware because Slackware does have a package handler, but it's more modular than most. Mm -hmm. So if I had to compare it to anything, it's uh, it's hell of a lot worse than Slackware. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so in other words, Ben, what you're saying is you are a sadomasochist. Somewhat, yeah. Okay. I wanted to understand what he's um, trying to work towards. Yeah, yeah. Let what? me tell my story, and then we'll jump back into some of the building stuff, because I haven't done as well. And also, I want to acknowledge Don Schmoos, a $10 super chat. Thank you very much for that, Don. We appreciate that. There you um, go. We'll get some good coffee going with that or something. All right, so of course, if you follow this channel, you know I came to Linux. Um, I was, uh, you know, a, a mostly computer tech uh, power user, mostly in the Windows world, with some experience in Windows and in Mac because I am a mostly a UI UX um, web developer. Uh, so I pr pretty much just build webs, uh, websites, um, some server things, and things like that. And so. Um, when Windows, like for me, I started to get irritated with Windows 8 um, when um, they started doing things like integrating SkyDrive in such a way you couldn't get it out, which of now is now own cloud or own drive. Was it own drive? OneDrive. One Thank you. OneDrive. One I don't know. I don't know anymore. I'm not in the Windows ecosystem. <laughs> 
Yeah, um, okay. But uh, they started doing stuff like that that I couldn't uninstall. It's like I never want to use a cloud service. Never want to use Windows, Microsoft cloud service. So I just want to uninstall this because I'm a minimalist and I just don't like extra stuff laying around, whether that's yeah. program menus, whatever else. And yeah. then they just started to push more and more and more stuff. And then I saw the privacy and data collection issues in Windows 10. I am like not a chance I'm going into that. So this goes back to the very first time I first saw Linux at all was I was selling academic software for a company and I had two computers running. I had one of them, which was my Windows computer, which was running my presentation software. I was basically, we had cold callers that would call the various professors, book the meetings, and I was the technical guy um, who could come in and show them how to use the software on screen sharing. So I always kept a second computer which had my Salesforce instance going on it so I could keep notes all in real time. Well, that was um, that was a, I wouldn't say that was a Lenovo computer. They had a low-end Lenovo model that they had a really bad bug in it and literally the hard drive was screwed directly onto the computer hard frame. So any touching of the computer would immediately send that shock right into the hard drive. And that thing in six months blew through two hard drives. So I started looking into, can you run Linux on a uh, on an external hard drive? It turns out that at that time with Windows 7, no, you could not. But I did find this little thing that was simply called Ubuntu that could seem to run on a external hard drive. So I'm like, let's see how that works. And it actually worked pretty well. Um, so I ran Ubuntu mostly as my, uh, as my Salesforce instance and still did Windows as that. And I remembered that. And then when Windows 10 started coming out, I said, well, let's go back and look at that Ubuntu thing. And, um, Ubuntu, I liked Unity. It was different. Um, I didn't hate it. It was different. There were some things I didn't like about it that didn't really jive with my workflow. I started looking around, how could I make it more like Windows? And then I ended up finding Linux Mint. Um, and Linux Mint is the distro that I run on all my production systems right now because it just completely is exactly what I want for my workflow. Works that looks perfectly actually fine. Nice. So that's just absolutely what I went with, and it does everything I needed to do. I can do all my development. I can do my server integrations, anything that I need to do, and my setup is exactly uh, like the Windows setup that is very familiar with me. And so that's why I switched to Linux and how I, I got here. Started with a really bad Lenovo computer design, and it ended in all of this. And thank you all guys for, for watching this. Um, we had Mark jump on. So, Mark, as soon as you're ready, go ahead and give us your experience on Linux and what brought you to Linux the first time. Okay, I'll try to make this brief and concise. Uh, is my audio good? Is it way your too audio loud? Is good. Yeah. Yep. Not Audio's muddled. Good. good. Okay, uh, picture's okay. Everybody can see me good enough, I guess. Yep. Audio's yes. good enough. Yep. Okay, yeah. Picture will be there. Um, okay, basically, I started at the college uh, taking network administration and support classes um, at my local Wilkes Community College, and I uh, was in the, well, again, the networking program, which I absolutely adored. We had so much fun. Um, I was going through the Windows portion of the uh, curriculum at first and doing very well in Windows, and then uh, come the second half of it we had to uh, uh, hop on Linux uh, there was two segments that we had to do there's Windows and Linux so in Linux admin well basically Linux single user where we were uh, getting familiar with the Linux command line so we had to learn the Linux command line so in Windows at the uh, in Linux admin one we uh, started with Fedora of all distros <laughs> And the reason is, is because the instructor loved Red Hat. He was a, uh, and you know, it's Raleigh, North Carolina, so it's kind of locally supported as well, uh, because I'm in North Carolina. But uh, anyway, Michael Southern, he was a brain. He was an excellent instructor, willing to help anybody where they could. He was just so bright. Uh, it was hard to follow him and his lectures and stuff. But basically with Fedora, I say all that to say I cut my teeth in Fedora. So I learned more about the Linux system and how it's built and how it operates, man pages and some of the advanced things uh, as far as how the kernel 
uh, is put together. And I learned that Linux was very secure, very reliable, and very stable. That's the He taught us that the first day, uh, that Linux is secure, stable, and very reliable. And uh, I, after using Fedora a little while, I fell in love with Linux. Well, during that time, I wanted something I could just pick up and use for my homework. So um, during the day, because I wasn't, you know, I, I wasn't experienced enough, quite enough to use Fedora as a daily driver. So what I did is I actually found Linux Mint due to a buddy of mine. And I ran Linux Mint on this Acer laptop until the uh, Acer Aspire laptop to the wheels fall off. And it ran... Uh, I had run Windows Vista, oddly enough, for the longest time, and I switched over to Mint, and I didn't look back for, like, years. Well, I had kind of got away from running Linux for whatever reason. Uh, I had started my tech computer business, and uh, I kind of got away from running Linux, and recently, about three, I'm about done, recently, about three years or so, I came back, and uh, one of the first distros I tried was Mint. And I found Mint to be absolutely beautiful, drop dead gorgeous, the way it was set up and everything. And I just, I once I fell in love with Linux, and once I came back, I have not looked back since. So I absolutely, I think Linux is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Uh, I do not want Linux to be become a mainstream uh, distro because I see problems with that with Microsoft and IBM and everything, and it breaks my heart that these corporations are interested in Linux because I know their end game is not good. But that's my story. Where I sit right now, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed, and I, I, I see Linux's future is very dim right now, and, uh, and I believe we're going to have to start forking some things at some point. Uh, how far does Microsoft go with this? You know? Mm-hmm. I trust IBM more than I do Microsoft, and I know that was kind of long-winded, but there was a lot there that I wanted to hit, so that was best sure. I could. Sure, sure, that's great. Yeah. But yeah. So, Mark, have you used Fedora as a daily driver yet? Uh, yeah, for short term, I used uh the Fedora twenty-eight or twenty-nine like a. Uh, three months or so ago and my take on it basically it worked a heck of a lot better than kubuntu for me kubuntu look was a third rate operating system i, I came on distro tube's channel i said i don't know i don't see how you run this junk it's awful <laughs> but, i'm uh, on fedora 29 <laughs> that's i asked that because i'm on fedora 29 yeah. right now this is on my main um computer yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah, Fedora, uh, I like Fedora. Fedora certainly worked better than... Uh, KD Neon was okay, but uh, again, graphical itches with third-party themes for uh, glitches, with third-party themes for whatever were a problem in uh, both KD Neon and Kubuntu. I find it best if you're going to run uh, KD Plasma, period, just don't do third-party themes. Just don't. <laughs> Just uh, <laughs> customize with what you got and don't add any of these third-party themes because they're from these independent theme makers that may or may not know how to put things together to work. Uh, even with like a process that I'm sure they give you to put those themes together. And I don't know why I'm flashing, but... What desktop do you use? Well, I've used several. My favorite, my go-to is Mate. Uh, either Mate or XFC. Mm -hmm. You know, that's yeah. the one common thread here, though, is the majority of everybody here that's on Linux is on more so out of a motivating factor, along with there's a curious side, I think, for most of us, but I think most of it was done by yeah. motivation for one reason or another. Yeah, I got away from Windows mainly uh, more and more because of the data mining, and it just got to the point where they were ticking me off. Mm -hmm. I, I think my last nerves and stuff they're doing at Microsoft. Yeah, Joe I'm made a really good point there. Joe, you made a really good point because you know what? Out of out of curiosity, um, let, let's put it this way, necessity, 
I think any of us, um, kind of knowing where everybody's come come from from a professional background, to a degree, necessity always deemed that we were kind of stuck in the world of Windows, to a degree. And of course, each one of us found yeah. different ways to be able to get away from that yeah. Windows world and um, supplement or replace with Linux. But you, you brought up a really good point. I think every single one of us, it, there is always, there's always been a common denominator of a certain level of curiosity underneath, underlying with all of us because, mm -hmm. um, you know, did we, did we have to make a change from Windows? Mm. Well, you know, we could go out and buy a bunch of different, bunch of different add-ons to Windows that kept us safe online. Did this, did that, and everything else. But, you know, did we get sick and tired of being sick and tired with our operating system? Yeah, probably. But curiosity was the big thing. And, the, and curiosity is what keeps, what keeps guys like me who really don't have any reason to really care what OS I'm using other than that this plane works and I don't have any vulnerabilities. Um, you know, it, it, gives guy, it gives a lot of us this, uh, hey, look, look at what this got released. Yeah, let's throw it on a USB drive and let's give it a spin and see what it looks like. See, uh, see where it, you know, see, see where it brings us. See how we like it. The curiosity was the, was literally the itch, the motivating factor, whatever it may have well, been for any of us was the yeah. scratch. I think maybe part of it is for most of us is that we didn't even know there was another option until we had to start looking for something else. You know, like um, I, I, yeah, like I, I said, like being a ten year old and looking at the Raspberry Pi, it was just amazing that there was something else out there besides Windows and Mac. Like, that was just fascinating to me. Well, give this a thought for the minute. We are all sitting here talking to each other, reading each other's messages and everything else on an operating system we were not forced to pay a penny for. Yeah. It's yep. Kitchen based. If you love the pie. I think that is a beautiful thing. And you know what? That's coming from a hardcore capitalist. So that means <laughs> something right there. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not anti-business, that's for sure. I mean, I, I sell sure. books, I sell websites and stuff like that. No, oh, there's nothing wrong. Everybody, I mean, there's nothing wrong with a business trying yeah. to make a living or earn profits mm -hmm. or whatever. But there's I a difference yeah. between somebody I, willingly giving you money for your services and somebody reaching into your pocket I, and taking it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a and, huge and, difference. That's my that's my thought about, you know, everything moving towards subscription services, you know, like at this point in time, when I first moved to Linux, if Adobe had software on Linux, I probably would have bought it. But I don't I, if they put Adobe on Linux now, I still wouldn't buy it because I'm not buying into their subscription service model. When Linux has GIMP that can do everything Photoshop can do, I have Illust um, Inkscape which can do everything Illustrator can do. Um, I do my web design on Bluefish. I mean, I everything that I would need an Adobe suite for is freely available on Linux. And then as my business is good, I can send some money over to those developers. Yep rather than anything else you know and that's the the power of linux it's just the the thing is you got to get out of the rut to say i have to have word working and um move out of that rut to say i have to have word working and um say how the task is i need to write a word doc um and with a word doc do i have to have word to write a word doc no, I can do that. There's WPS Office, there's Open Office, there's LibreOffice, there's Only Office, and there's more out there. You guys know more. I've used LibreOffice for uh, how long now? It's been years now. Mm -hmm. That's what I use for my work. And I, I export directly to PDF, so I've got my documents, <laughs> with my prices, and everything. And, you know, I've got all my core documents, and I have mm -hmm. both in Word. And Word format through LibreOffice, and I don't have a bit of issue. And then I just export them straight to PDF from LibreOffice. Mm -hmm. Super quick, too. Yeah, I started with OpenOffice, I think, back in 06. And Libre was around then, but OpenOffice was more the go to. Yeah. And then that, within yeah. a year or two after that, I think, is when it kind of shifted over mm -hmm. to Libre, starting yeah. to be kind of the, the main one. Yeah. I was using it. I was using WPS Office um, for quite a while, mm -hmm. but then when you know, in the kind of last, I don't know, maybe two years or so, 
as the darker theming started to become a little bit more popular. Mm. It really helped, really helped on my eyes. And I found that um, uh, WPS office wouldn't theme correctly, and it just didn't, it didn't look right. And the fonts kind of, if you switch to a darker theme, it didn't work that great. So I started using LibreOffice, and I haven't even looked back since. Mm-hmm. Are we talking about Office Suites now? Yeah. Um, it's, of course, I did the video uh, this morning about um, my experience, like the frustration with Word this this week, because of course I still have the I still have I have two writing computers that I write on. One is a Windows 8 computer, which I've had for a number of years, and the the one I actually do the production on is is Peppermint. And uh, what was funny is we were. I have a Nextcloud instance with a Calibora online office, which runs LibreOffice online, just like Google Docs would. Um, and my co-author wrote his essay out that I needed to integrate in. I download the essay off and try and open it in Word, and it doesn't want to open. So fortunately, I still have OpenOffice on that particular computer, so I can open it up over there, paste it over into Word. It's just like, yeah, no, Word's not better. It's worse. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't have an Office Suite currently on this computer, but I have Word on my Mac. Mm-hmm. And I do not like it. Yeah. And you probably have to have that. For... Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. But, um, no, I, I use Google Docs most of the time. I really want to get only Office on here, but there's issues with it on Fedora. Oh really? What's that? Yeah, what it won't install. I've never i I've put i put it on Fedora before. It's with recent versions. Like there's some huh. there's I don't I can't remember. It's some dependency. Mm. Yeah, yeah I don't but, know. I, last time I ran Fedora, which was not too long ago, I was able to get it running. Yeah, I'll, um, maybe they fixed the issue. Yeah, I don't really um. If it's I just really a, like LibreOffice, I never really like the UI of it. Mm-hmm. I like yeah, only that's, office that's because that's because you're young and yeah. you're not yeah. used to configurable t- toolbars. Well, he's not. He's never used Word 2003 because that's mm-hmm. it's very much like Word 2003 still yet. Correct, and that's exactly why I like it because yeah. what I need to do when I'm formatting a document to send to a printer to be to print a book. When I uh, do the documents, I have to use certain tools over and over, and it's very convenient to throw them all up in one toolbar that I don't have to scroll through different toolbars to find. Um, and Mobius Hex asks, what about Excel? Is Libre version not as good? I think it's every bit as good. Um, I've not had any issues with my Excel documents in, in Libre Calc. I don't know if you guys have had more or less experience with that. Mine's been pretty good. The only thing with LibreOffice Cal is uh, when you're doing, if you're doing like a serious spreadsheet, please do keep in mind it's like if you're if you're in a business environment or something, then it's got to be to the penny. Be very careful with financial stuff if you're doing like a worksheet for keeping your finances, your budget. It it's gonna be like somebody said it was like. Zero point uh, point zero two or point zero one uh, cents off uh, as compared to the Word document or the Word Excel spreadsheet mm-hmm. when you uh, translate into the LibreOffice like Open Office format. It's mm-hmm. well, anytime you're using LibreOffice, it's like zero point zero one or zero point zero two percent or sent off like it's microscopic almost but when you have several calculations it can actually affect like if you're somebody like tom running his own business or you're working for a church and you're doing treasury i know at uh bowling springs we have an awesome treasury person and they want to be down to the penny exact because they believe they're strong believer in being a good steward of god's money and they want to be as accurate as humanly possible and it's something to consider, you know. But that's just a little nuance thing that I learned about a couple of years ago or so. That's really strange because I cross-check all of my <laughs> statements that I get. And I've, I've never ever, between the spreadsheet that I actually built in Excel and then moved over to, uh, well, I had it in WPS Office first and then LibreOffice, I've had the same spreadsheet for about seven or eight years. 
I have, I have, I've never, ever, 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 ever had, outside of my own mistakes, I should say, I've never had any discrepancies. If I've had a, if I've had a discrepancy, I've found it, I've fixed my error, and I've never had that. So interesting, I'll have to keep an eye out for it. In the functions, in the functions, because I mean, the functions are handling the calculations, so, Mm -hmm. on your importance. Hmm. I'll have to keep an eye out Instead for that. Of, you're not just plugging in. You see what I'm saying? You're not just plugging in uh, numbers manual. This is something I heard. I have not seen it firsthand. So, yeah. Because your functions are going to do your calculations. So you're not just, it's not like you're just plugging in direct numbers. If you're using it right. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah, that's the power of Excel is the functions. So, Tom, I found the issue right what here. What makes it so, so right. useful. What do we got, Quint? I found the issue right here on GitHub. Right. It can't open. Yeah, right here. It's this. Yeah. It says no version information available, and it's requ- some sort of dependency, and it's required, mm-hmm. and it's an issue with Fedora 29. Hmm. Okay. And apparently the other, I, then I tried the app image after that, and the app image doesn't work either. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we not surprised? <laughs> Um, so I think they said they're going to fix it and but the only option would be to run a snap and I don't like snap so I don't think mm. I'm going to do that with the yeah. app image um, plan, have you tried marking it as executable in properties and yes I did that okay. Look, they, there's the error right here other people are having this error too mm-hmm. um, what about running one of the off- other office suites if you need an office suite I don't need one. That's the thing. Okay. But I, yeah, if I need I one that's... desperately, I would choose LibreOffice. But I don't need one desperately because mm-hmm. I do all the stuff that I have to do in an office suite on my other computer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my... but yeah I be... didn't mention this to you guys, but I have to have a Mac for school. So I'm not full-time Linux, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, no, I, I still have Windows computers that haven't died yet. And until yeah. they die, I won't I, be full-time. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. Yeah, I Right on the other side of my room here, I have two uh, old school Windows XP machines over there. Uh, another good, um, you know, depending on if you want to pay for it or not, of course. Um, I use SoftMaker Office um, yeah, for sure. for a fair amount of time, and you know what? That of of all the Office suites that I've used, um, SoftMaker I think was probably it was probably the the easiest plug and go. You know this. Mm-hmm. Pay for it, download it. Uh, you know, it's not terribly expensive when you look at you know getting like a an Office Online account or something like that. It, it's cheap, comparatively cheaper than that. But um, it worked really good. But then I just I you know kind of like we've talked, I just got to the point where you know what this other stuff, LibreOffice. You know, I don't have to worry about remembering to pay for a subscription, this that, and everything else, and it works just mm-hmm. fine. So I never re up my subscription, but it, it worked really well. It's really robust, and it. Uh, had 100%, just about 100% familiar, familiarity so far as using uh, Office 2003. And that was supposed to be very compatible or work much like Windows, uh, Microsoft Office. Yeah, I think they were, I think they were advertising did. that there were, theirs was supposed to be the most compatible with Office. Yep. And, it, it, and it worked good. It looked really sharp. That was one of the things. I mean, it, it looked, it it looked and and mimicked the part of a full Microsoft product. You can do trial with that too, can't you, Tim? I think. Um, I th- I can't remember. Let me look at their website here. Uh, they got a they have a download. I thought I could have sworn it was a trial or, or or a light version of it first or something to that effect. You know what? There there used to be at one time, Joe. Yeah. Okay. So I just went to the download page and I'm downloading the dev package. And um, uh, let me download it and I'll fire it up and see what it says. It's probably one of those things where you download it and then um, as soon as you open it up, no, nope. you know it'll have the little thing somewhere. It'll say you've got. You know, you got it'll have a little countdown thing with like ten or fourteen or thirty. So each day that you open it up, that will count down to the amount of time that you have. There is a free trial version link on there. Uh, um, is there? Okay. We're gonna we're gonna wrap that up. Uh, keep it techie. Just jumped on. Greetings. Nice to meet you, man. 
Hey, hey, man. Hey, how you Super doing? chats do get my attention, Hi. so absolutely. So welcome, man. How you doing? <laughs> very How's good, very good. So you wanted to jump on and tell us your Linux story. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so I've been in the IT field for over 10 years. Uh, I started out by uh, um, just going to school. I've done networking, computer networking, systems administration, all that good stuff. Um, so how I got into Linux... Uh, I started with a company uh, here in Las Vegas, uh, where where I'm living, and uh, mm -hmm. there was uh, another administrator that was there. He uh, he was using Linux for pretty much everything. They had a uh, a few Windows servers that uh, were set up, so it, they they hired me on to basically manage those, and um, I just basically uh, he basically talked me into trying it. So I tried it, uh, Ubuntu, I think it was uh, 8.4, um, Hardy, Hero, ago, or whatever. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and um, when I saw the whole spinning desktops, the cube, you know, uh, all, that, all that good stuff, that, that kind of that kind of made me very interested in it. And uh, so I've just been, I started my journey from there. Um, I've distro hopped, uh, currently I'm running uh, Orch, but I've been around and uh, and use you know Ubuntu, Mate, uh, and I'm constantly testing them in VMs as well. Uh, so um, you know, just just trying to get my experience up uh, using Linux. Mm -hmm. So, what's your so what favorite you desktop environment? My favorite desktop environment. Well, the one I'm currently using is uh, GNOME. I also like XFCE. Um, Cool. Which is, you know, real good on resources. Yeah. So, yep. Finally, another person who uses GNOME here. <laughs> Y'all yeah. must be yeah. like Apple. Have yeah. some like, kindred with well, Apple. You know what? You know what? I, I saw a really cool, compelling video though uh, the other day about like the the philosophy of how to use GNOME well. And so I was like, maybe I should reinstall GNOME on the system and it's try keyboard. and force myself to learn it that way yeah. and see if it actually works better um yeah. of course i've always it's tried real. to do stuff like that and i've just found that the way i have things set up is just how i work but yeah absolutely well yeah. Yeah. I, 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 an old I, mac I, to learn no yeah what what's your um uh keep it techie what's your current daily driver uh i'm, I'm using orch right now uh, and I yeah I, start, I installed it using uh, the wiki followed it but I, I just wanted to say one more thing um, I did stop using Linux for a while uh, because of my my work and then also I bought a new laptop I just um, really liked Windows 8 <laughs> to be honest and then say. yeah and then um, once they started going just just like what uh what Tom said uh, about uh, them. Uh, putting the OneDrive and and just all the privacy issues that were coming up, um, I was like, ah, I need to go back to to Linux and and I started back with uh, Interagos because I, I was kind of afraid to mess with Arch <laughs> right <laughs> off uh, coming from a long break, and so uh, I finally worked up the you know the courage to install Arch and and got it going. So so can I tell you a little story? So. On Windows 10, I tried to uninstall OneDrive, which you can through the control panel. And what happened is I did that, but it broke the entire um, file explorer. <laughs> yeah, there is actually one other way to do it without breaking the file explorer, and that's you have to uh, execute a shell command, which I forget what the shell command is. Um, but I actually did it. Um, I actually... Uh, this was back in was it this was it the 1604 version or was it 1608 I forget what Windows versions numbers were uh, a while back when I had a t Windows test computer I actually ran the command that got rid of all of the Metro all of the everything that's uninstallable and finally killed Candy Crush once and for all and uh, there's but of course that some it, stuff in um, PowerShell every now and again. yeah yeah get that's rid of the all thing. that stuff. I actually really like PowerShell. I've been learning it a little bit. It's a nice yeah. language, and it works on all platforms. Yeah. The reality of it is, is you could stop all the telemetry. You can you can literally clean up Windows until the next update comes. When the next big update comes, mm -hmm. it puts everything right back again. That's that and saying. that right there keeps my subscription plans going for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it removes your files to make room for the updates. 
Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and, uh, there, you, there you go. Yep, 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 yep. Come on, what are they on? Third, third time's a charm, right? <laughs> you know, I just, I just downloaded um, Soft, Soft, uh, Soft Maker Office. Mm-hmm. And they've actually changed quite a bit, quite a bit since I last downloaded it. Now, when you start it up for the first time, it asks you for a button layout. They've got um, Office 2003 and then Office 97 as button nice. layouts and stuff. Cool. They, they've changed it a lot. It looks, it looks pretty, pretty cool. Nice. For the longest time, with the ribbons on the newer Office, I thought that was a patent that somehow Microsoft had a patent. I'm like. At what point is an open source company going to mimic that? You know, I feel yeah. I felt like it would eventually, and they finally did with only Office. And the Go trial ahead, mode is and the trial mode is thirty days, Joe. Yeah. Um, you can you can unlock it days. with a uh, product key at first startup, or you can start it in the trial mode for thirty days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that's okay. So let's get Fluff's question. Um, using Debian testing, anyone else had problems connecting WP Enterprise Wi Fi with it? Any of you guys use Debian other than me? Testing. I've tried to install Debian testing on my other Linux laptop, my chief laptop, but it, could, it wouldn't work because I had to load Broadcom Wi Fi drivers. Mm, okay. So I don't know. I really do like Debian though. But I have, I I've never really had any issues with it. I have, I have had VMs. Max and Linux on another drive, which is very Debian based with XFCE. And I'm having a hard time getting some things to work like Steam don't want to really install. Mm, uh, yeah, I'm trying to see if I can actually get to my network settings. I have a, I have a Linux Mint Debian over here. Of course, it's based on stable, not testing, but... Um, I do not actually have my networking stuff over on this thing. So how, how comfortable is he with the terminal? Because it, he may need to like do like a firm, get the firmware directly from like a Linux driver page, and then is yeah. it why not working in Debian? Is did I hear correctly? Um, it looks like it looks like he's having a difficulty with just connecting to a WP. So like the it looks like the Wi-Fi adapter is working. It's just connecting to. A WPA Enterprise is not working with it. So okay. I don't have specific experience with that. Like this okay, computer so does have wired and wireless, but I can't, I don't have the networking and I'm not going to turn around and try and get it to show up right yeah. now. That's okay. You're just trying to uh, basically, sir, ma'am, I'm not in the chat here. You're mm-hmm. just basically trying to connect to an existing business network, basically, from home or at your work. Is that what he's saying? Is that what he's trying to get at? Yeah, I, I don't know. I can't tell from that. Um, Maybe follow up on that afterwards with either me or Tom. Either one. Uh, Tom has some stuff, apparently, yeah, I, I, computer that he can get to. Uh, and, like, they're, like, he offers it free, probably free to an extent. And if you need to pay for service, he'll probably help you with that if you want to do that. But... Uh, I know that you have uh, yours set up to where you're helping mm-hmm. people where they need it. And uh, yeah, you know who I'd ask? Matthew Moore would be the better one to ask. Matthew yeah. or Ben Fitzpatrick, as Kenny Woodrin suggests, because he uses that on laptops. On my laptop, I run Linux Mint Cinnamon because I have to have stability on that. That's like my that's my mobile work computer. And um, I'll hear- and it, it seems like, you know, there's some things I could try that should fix it, but it may be one of those to where it's, sound, it's already kind of sounding like maybe it may be a command so, line situation. Okay, so he sounds, he says he's trying to connect to a school Wi-Fi. Oh, okay, okay. So it's does just that not take it. Yeah. Okay, so, the stupid question first is... This is going to be a dumb question, but I have to ask these type of things for the purposes of troubleshooting. Um, you've entered it's case sensitive, most likely the password. Uh, mm-hmm. So you've got you've got it entered correctly, probably correct. You've double checked that at the at the base level, and it's just what is it, are you getting any error message? If you're entering it correctly and you've tried it a few different times, are you getting any error message? Mm-hmm. And also, have you viewed the viewed the password on it so that you can verify yeah. you have it right? I mean, I happen to know that there are just happen to be some networks that just won't work with some configurations. I know, for example, um, 
Which one is it? My, I think the iPhone that I still have won't connect to my PF Sense wireless network, but it will connect to my extended wireless network. So it's just I don't know why. Um, and I've encountered some of those things. No, what, no, it's not the iPhone. It's the it's the Windows 8 computer. My Windows 8 computer will not connect to my PF Sense wireless network. It will simply will not. Um, oh yeah, check firewall <laughs> things. Is, it's it's a firewall thing. the encryption issue though. I mean, if you're trying to get into a school network, maybe there's an encryption issue somewhere along the line too that has to be taken care of. The settings may be off as far yeah, as he, he said he's double checked. He said he's double checked all the settings, including the config file. Okay. It will usually keep asking for a password over and over again. That is the exact condition I have on my Windows 8 computer attempting to connect to a PFSense wireless. So I'm wondering if it's just an incompatibility somewhere. I mean, if it's a school network, I would probably take it to IT at the school and ask them if they can help you with it. If they've got it. Yeah, they may or may not know what Debian is, but... That is... (laughs) That's awful. It does seem like something's not jiving. Something's incompatible. That's that's what it sounds like. It really does. Um, yeah, the secret suggests maybe you need a token, which is a possibility. Yeah. So, this is kind yeah. of annoying, Tom. I just I decided just to pull up the just to pull up my website to make sure Ghost was working, and I went mm-hmm. through the setup process, and I have to create an account with Ghost in order for oh, it to work. Really, I didn't know that. Here, look. Do you want me to screen share? Uh, yeah. But go for it. it says I don't know if this is a local account, but um. Here, let me just, here's the setup process. I'll just go through the entire setup process. So screen share. All right. So can you yeah. see, do you see ghost right now? Yeah. So I have, so I just go to my domain slash ghost. So I have to go to create your account. Mm. I have no idea if this is a local thing or if this is on ghost server. Based on the URL, it almost looks like it's local. Um, uh, d- give me an F12 and give me a hover over that button there. Okay. So just in a, a developer tools? Correct. Yeah, which F12 is the hotkey for. I always just do inspect element and then I just yep. find what I'm looking yep. for. Yep, just inspect so the green So just button. over this. Yeah. Actually, what I want to see is I want to see the overall wrapping form. Just stay right there. Okay, so I'll do the inspector. Uh, no, go back inspector again, okay. and then just go over the the whole form because there's a form tag in there. Do they serve it? Okay, is that yeah? There's uh, the there, form right there's okay. a form right there. There's a form. What I want to see is where's that going? Should um, I go to uh, or... set up? Create. Hold on. No, no, no. Just keep Stay it right there for a second. Okay, so that's actually going to be executing through a JavaScript code. So I don't know where that's going about investigating that. My guess is that is a local account, which it's the same thing that like WordPress or anything else is going to give you that this is what gives you your admin yeah. access into it. So I would say this okay. is a this is a safe thing. To okay, do. that's, that's fine. Guess. Yeah. So I don't see anything in the network or quest that's going to go. So I think we should be fine. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, that's probably like when you set these types of things up there, you usually have to one of the first steps is to create an admin account. So you can I was just a little bit confused because well. it made me put my email in. That's, that's standard. Was... Yeah, that's standard. Yeah, school network. Okay. Yeah. That was my question. Oh, I've never used Ghost before. I know you said that you can't, you don't like it very much. I've never used it because it's something that ha- you have to set up on, you have to set it up on like a server like you're doing on DigitalOcean or things like that. When you're getting to the level of web design I do, you do not build servers unless you absolutely have to for some task. You know, we, we spin things up with cPanel because we have a limited amount of time. When we, I can't spend, you know, 10 hours building a server for somebody when a cPanel can get it to them for 100 bucks a year, you know. So, um, oh, what is a good antivirus for Windows? I told them to just dual boot with Linux. Well, <laughs> there you I'm go. I can help with that. Uh, Malwarebytes Premium is what I would I go like, um I like Sophos. They're really good. Yeah. They're more of a business. They're a business security company, but they have a home product that's free. Yeah. It's like really, really good. Well, I kind of question that's all. That's what of I them. put on my grandmother's computer, who downloads viruses from Facebook. Yeah, if you're, if you're just running the free version, also run like a super anti spyware along with it, mm-hmm. and just disable Windows Defender. 
because it takes forever to scan with Windows Defender mm-hmm. at times, at any given time. It right. could go quick at times. So so Fluff said, took it to the school tech guy, and the tool, school tech guy just told him to use Windows. <sighs> okay. The other guy tried to help, but said he yeah. wasn't sure of the promise. Okay, here's what I would try, Fluff. I the would... Center. Um, I would get um, get an Ubuntu um, live key and boot the computer, take it to school, boot the computer off of your live key and see if you can connect from that. That's going to tell you if it's a Debian testing issue or if it's an Ubuntu or it's something else. Um, my instinct says it's probably going to work if you do Ubuntu, in which case, question, do you really need Debian testing or do you want to use something else that you know you can get it to work? allow for i'm putting if it's a wpa2 enterprise it may very well be that the router is not set up to allow that type of authentication or mm-hmm. no wouldn't be right your laptop would it's matching though he said he checked all the settings it's yeah. that's odd that's very strange i mean it's obviously it's saying it's coming up as the wpa2 enterprise network he set it to WPA2 Enterprise. He set the password. He knows the network name. Obviously, he sounds like mm-hmm. he's that to that point at least. Yeah. And um, he knows he's entering the password correctly. Mm-hmm. Did somebody give you the wrong password? Is that what it is? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, keep it tacky. Do you have any idea? If you do sysadmin, do you have any idea on this? Uh, nah. Uh, <laughs> no idea. <That's> <laughs> Very like nice. I said, I would I would just I would just get a an Ubuntu live key, take it with you to school, boot the computer on the Ubuntu live key, and see if you can get in there. Um, that's going to tell you yeah, if it's Debian I'm testing or something you know. else. Yeah, that's probably what I would do. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, anybody know why this motherboard is not detecting the Ethernet? Faulty board. <laughs> um. Is it in deep sleep mode? Is it Windows? Because I've had that happen before, and that's a PIA. Okay. And I don't mean private internet access. Because <laughs> <laughs> I love private internet access. Yeah. Doesn't matter elsewhere. It seems like using IWD instead of WPA supplicant might fix the problem. Okay. Yeah. There's some things to test anyway. You got a few. Got a few things to test. We gave you some suggestions there, and I got I wrote some things in the chat along with what Tom said. So yeah, you'll get um, to you figure are, it are out. You referring to the terminal? Was it terminal that I asked, or somebody? No, okay. Excuse me. I, I'm looking at. I'm looking back now. Is it uh, Caladini? Okay, the motherboard. The discs that come with it are usually outdated drivers, so I never recommend anybody using the discs that come with a motherboard. Anyway, you should always download the latest drivers and see if that works. If not, then it may very well be hardware related, you know, Ethernet port could be bad, that sort of thing. Or, mm-hmm. you know, it could also be something with your router connection as well, too, because there have been issues, especially depending on the updates and how old your router is and things like that. Because I just, matter of fact, to give you an example, it's two different things, same principle. We just had our service upgraded and my router uh, works perfectly fine, but it's restricting the the throughput stream because it's it's several years old now so i need to get a new router for that reason so i would start with trying to download the latest drivers first from the website yeah, i think he actually said that he looked online if it's the same person that said he looked online and didn't actually see okay. the drivers but oh he did i'm sorry uh, but uh, that might have been a different person i don't know okay tom so this looks this is a very nice ui here so this is the ghost ui here where you oh, have like okay. a new story and then these this is all the stuff that was included like all the huh. stories here okay you can invite other people oh, i was cool. created an admin user because i always like to do that yep do an admin and then I do would, a separate one just that's what you. i do always yeah yeah Oh, that's cool. And then, so we have general settings. We just have all these settings. I'm going to redo the theme, definitely, because yeah. you know how I'm a material design freak. <laughs> of and course. I material <laughs> design theme, and the theme is not material. This okay. is what it looks like here. Um, pretty nice. And I just, I had, I could only do, it was a one click digital ocean install. So all I had to do was just click the button and then I just ran through a setup process and it got SSL, which is really nice. 
It worked out yeah. great, and finally nice. I can get it. I'm get my website off of GitHub before Microsoft completely takes it over. Uh, he said, not to jump back, like I interject. He, he said there's no drivers available on the website, which is completely odd. I don't know mm. any motherboard manufacturer that doesn't have drivers available. Yeah, that's if weird. An, especially if it's a newer board, that that sounds completely bizarre. Yeah, I have a very new board, and even I was able to get an upgraded BIOS. Yeah. My BIOS is extremely hairy, too. Now, if it's an older board, that might be possible it was discontinued, but... Um... Um, is Ghost any better than WordPress? Renard, um, Ghost, the, the problem is Ghost can't run on a basic cPanel system. It takes a lot more resources, so you have to build it out on a server. So in this case with DigitalOcean, I'm sure there's other places where you can do a one-click install of it, but it doesn't run on a cPanel. So if you're run, going to run Ghost, you have to run more of a custom brewed server. Whereas WordPress is certainly has a lot more information out there. Of course, give it a couple days for WordPress when they decide to like kill it with Gutenberg. We'll see what happens. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, I would say that um, I, I think that Ghost is very, very limited in what you can do uh, just with the different things that I do in yeah. WordPress on a daily it's basis. It's designed to be simple. Yeah, it's it's designed as a blogging platform versus WordPress is designed as a full CMS at this point. Yeah, but Ghost works for what I need it to do, and I, I kind yeah. of just got tired of editing plain HTML. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The PA and WPS Enterprise Protocol Certificate is not needed. Peep version. So there is. Okay, yes, yeah, so that's good. All right. Well, I think uh, we've been on here almost two hours now. I think we're going to go ahead and start wrapping this train home. So we'll give it another few minutes. Uh, so uh, let's see, Dan, you've been quiet for a little bit. Do you have any final words? Would I have any final words? Well, about a year ago, I came across an article in a financial magazine I was reading while I was waiting for my appointment. And it, had break down, it broke down to this. If you actually put something out there, even if the people don't like it, eventually they're going to like it. And this is what Windows had ran their platform on. And as you'd notice, Windows started out and it was kind of flat and plain and like 98 and me and then 2000. Then about Windows XP, they added a lot of 3D characters and, and theming to their desktop, which made it look really gorgeous and stuff like that. But they had left over 50 different backdoor holes open in it. So they could actually go in and do updates or maintenance your Windows installation as needed. They weren't hard uh, holes that were open. You had to have security keys and stuff to get in them. But that's why Windows XP became so virus prone. People were starting to kill that. Kill it. Yeah. Sorry. Well, anyways, okay. as time okay. went on with this theme, we'll just give it to them and they'll eventually like it. They started removing all the 3D stuff, starting with Windows 7, but they added the arrow, uh, um, the arrow taskbar to kind of cover some of that up. And it still is a nice operating system and so on and so forth, but they've been pulling things out, removing 3D uh, images and stuff like that the free up resources that Windows, uh, starting with Windows 8, so they could start using that for a different purpose other than just Windows. Telemetry. And, yeah, it all boiled down to they had done so much of this that it boiled down to now that they've freed up enough resources to use telemetry. Didn't you say, um, Dan, Sorry that they purposefully that, made the flat icon theme so there was enough memory for telemetry? Yes, they they have every aspect of Windows that's no longer 3D and is just plain Jane, and we're supposed to accept it as the modern look. Well, modern look, you're getting less to look at, you know? It's it's like everything else today. They're taking stuff away from us and expecting us to like it. And um, and in the background, they're doing evil things that Tom's always doing news articles on. 
Yeah. Wait, wait until yeah. you see the latest security breach this week. Yeah. We'll give you guys a preview of coming attractions. Remember how I keep saying don't use SMS to verify your phone? Millions, if not billions, of those leaked. Yeah, that's the only thing <laughs> Twitter has right now, and I won't. I want to do two-factor authentication, and Twitter keeps. Uh, I'm Twitter for exposure and all that, but I'm not doing Facebook no more. But I'm like, I, I'm gonna. I want to use two-factor authentication, but I've got like three different authenticator apps. Can I use my Authy? I like. I like my Authy. I don't want to have to if the companies quit screwing up everything in their favor. That's all they do is the yes. Yep. SMS is the all, all they offer as well. It's it's like they want to make be more secure, but you're actually being less secure by not allowing people to use authenticator apps. There's a lot more to the story I just told you, but I wanted to kind of sum it all up into something I could tell you all real quick. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. I missed about half. Half of what you were saying, it sounded good, but uh sounded interesting. My computer died, and I came back on, and then the video started playing. I had to restart, so I apologize for the interruption, Danny. I'm sure Tom will re-air this. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm charged up now, so go ahead, Quinn. So I found, so hallelujah, I found a ghost material design theme <laughs> here. <laughs> This is the guy who made it. This is his blog. Oh, there you go. That's just up your alley. Cool. And then here's the GitHub page. This is what I need to install. <laughs> nice. Huh? You'll you'll get her done. Um, Joe, what are your final words? The camera. Um, you know, we keep picking on Windows, but everybody forgets about Mac. You know, you know, and, and one of the things I notice is there's another update. That came through for the OS, and if I had a Mac, I'd be beating that up too. Well, yeah, I don't have a Mac today. I have an Apple phone though, which is going to probably be the last one I have after. This. I got but one too. As soon as they announce or, or, or put through that, there's an update ready for this thing. My phone gets laggy, glitchy. It just it, it's amazing the tactics that they pull to get you or to force you to do, like you mentioned, the two the two step authentication. They badge you to death. They, they mess with your phone. They do all kinds of things. I mean, Apple, to me, is just as bad as Windows when it comes to that. And the sad part is, is when you look at Mac OS and you look at the file system, it's the same file system as Linux. It's just what they've done for the proprietary uh, business model, whatever you want to call it, that, that it's very frustrating. So to me, you know, one of the things about these streams is as much as we talk about this is how problems are going to get worked out and fixed in Linux for one thing. But I keep saying, and I'm going to probably be the one that keeps, keeps trying to be the advocate for positive. We need to look at what the, the benefits are to using this. It's not, I guess the one thing that does kind of frustrate me a little bit is it's not the, for the sim, more simplistic, oh, I just want a web browser. Oh, I just want to get on Facebook. I just want, you know. It's not just that. You can you can get a lot of workflow done with this system and a lot of the tools that are available out there. Are there certain tools that you're not going to be able to do? Are there certain games you're not going to be able to play? Absolutely. But then again, I said it you know, on middle last night. I said, bottom line, there's, there's a lot of things you're not going to be able to do in a Windows or Mac platform that you can do here, too. I mean, how many people can make a system look you're worried about aesthetics. Look exactly what you want. Workflow exactly what you want. Put tools that you want in there, and don't have to be paying through the nose and buy something and decide you know it isn't going to work for me, and I just wasted that money. Um, and there, yes, there are some unfriendly uh, platforms out there with Linux that you would like to go to for help. Uh, but that's not all of them. There, you know, there's a lot of good people out there, and this community as a whole. Is, has been wonderful. So I think if if we can keep getting the word out, if we can educate people, you know, the best thing that Windows is doing is driving people over to this this platform. <laughs> it really is. And same thing with, with Mac. But it's just it's up to people like us to get the word out and show them. And, because people are touchy-feely. Everybody wants to see and experience something. To just talk about it isn't enough. So 
But thank you for having me on tonight. I appreciate this. And it's always wonderful to see all of you. And and uh, anytime that, you know, my strength is more in the hardware aspect of it too. So, I mean, I try to help wherever I can. And that's all part of this community. We want to help. So thank you. Hey, Joe, about your iPhone, did you let it take the latest update? Not as of yet. I always wait. I don't do it the minute it shows up. I haven't either, and it's been bugging me, and I've I've actually got it blocked on my router. You can go into your <laughs> phone and delete the update that's pestering you, yeah. and it won't bother you for the longest time until that file is restored. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, my iPad, I think it's still running iOS 9. I have no intention of upgrading it. Yeah. Well, if they're, you know, the same thing, if there's security patches in there or whatever, that's one thing. But they sit there and they tell, oh, we added 100 emojis or some garbage like that. Who cares about that? But then they put, and there's been a bunch of other updates, but they don't tell you what they are just to get yeah. you out of it. No. It yeah, I think we need to have a lot more detail and we need to have the option to say, I want only security patches, period. Right. Because it's like, for me, the reason I like Debian-based systems is they don't keep rolling new versions of software. I don't want all my versions of software to constantly be changing. Like, I, I upgraded Audacity because um, when I, I was doing um, audiobook production uh, to start selling my books on audiobook, um, you, there's to get the formatting exactly the way it needs to be to sell on all of the audiobook distributors, you have to have very tight regiments and somebody actually wrote plugins to do all those for Audacity but you have to have a version of Audacity that is greater than the one in the Linux Mint repository so I upgraded it and it's just like it changed the entire UI of everything it works better frankly but now it's like I gotta relearn where everything is on Audacity and you know, that's just not something I want to do every single day that case of course it was good because I needed to do it to get the audiobooks out so um, but that was that was that. So he <laughs> he ain't got time um, to sit down and learn another, another program. That's the thing, you know. Yeah. And, and I don't have time to relearn the program I already know. That's that's yeah. exactly why I stopped using OpenShot. Yeah. We want to live, so not much. learn how to operate a machine every yeah. end yeah. of our lives. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. And that's so. I want just security patches, and until that's an option, I don't. I think that security is more of a function of what you do with your computer, not what your computer is. And so I'm not on shady places. I don't go to shady places. And if I do need to need to go to a shady places, I'll boot up cubes. That's a ton of it. <laughs> uh, keep, it keep it techie. Uh, what's your final words? Um, well, I just wanted to uh, want to say uh, thanks for having me on. Um, I really, I really appreciate you guys' channel. I follow, I follow you. I follow DistroTube. I follow Easy okay. Linux. I'm not trying to shot them all out or whatever. Oh, but, no, no, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. I, 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 I follow, follow them all. Like so, Joe yeah. Collins, DistroTube, and yep. do you follow yep. Toss too? Total OS today. Oh no, no, I, I, I may need to check out his channel. Yeah. But, uh he, he does kind of like what we're doing here. He does it like almost. Mm -hmm. It's multiple times a week, so he's a great okay. one. You can you you'd be glad to jump on over there sometimes. He's so. a super nice oh. guy. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah but, but I really appreciate you guys letting me on, come on, and just uh, tell him my story. Ab yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. This this right here, I'm sorry to interject. Life in Linux was actually a it was the brainchild of Tom and Total OS Today. Yep. But Total OS today couldn't be here tonight. He has something going on. So normally this is him and uh, him and Tom's show right here that they do together. So yeah, it's actually rare to have this many people on it. We actually only yeah. planned on having like four or five of you guys on, but yeah, um, more than okay. my um, anything else. Keep it techie. Um, no, nah, that's it. I mean, I I also uh, do videos as well. Awesome. Um, very good. I mean, it's it's small. I just, but yeah, that's that's something I do on the side. So very cool. Just very good. Work. Um, Mark, your final words. Linux rocks. All right, there you go. go Linux get it. rocks. Esteri. All right, there you go. Uh, Quint, final last words. Well, I'm glad um, my 12-year-old self discovered Linux, so that way I wouldn't have to be um, with macOS any longer than I have to be right now. You don't want to be a sheep. <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Tim, final words. 
Uh, thanks for the invite tonight. It's always a uh, it's always a pleasure to see all of you guys, uh, my online Linux uh, kind of geek friends. Um, you know, Linux is is what you're going to make of it. Um, if you're looking for an OS, just to jump on, uh, have some fun, um, mm -hmm. have some fun learning, even more yeah. so. Uh, it's really a place to be. Um, even if you need, even if you're stuck into the whole, I have to have Word for this, or I have to have Windows for that, and all that stuff, it doesn't mean that you can't bring at least a little bit more enjoyment in the computing side of your life back in by just throwing Ubuntu or Mint or Lord knows whatever onto a jump stick and run it from there and just play with it. Um, Linux, can, Linux can do a lot of different things for a lot of different people. All the way from a hobbyist to a person like you, Tom, who you, you run multiple businesses plus what we're doing here tonight off of Linux. Um, and just have fun. Uh, the one last thing I want to say is, is that somebody made a comment earlier that the, the, uh, the outlook for Linux is dim. You know, to a degree with all of the business things, with some of the things that are happening out there from strictly a business perspective, yeah, you know what, we could probably question that. I think um, yeah. some of the things that we've seen in the news in the last, I don't dare I say three months, six months, that can be that, that can be a little bit discerning from people like us who hold this operating system and this community so close to our hearts. But the one thing I'm going to say is that we have a young gentleman on here this guy is a quarter of my age and if if there's anything that we can do to place hope in the future of this as, as an operating system as a philosophy and as a community look no further than people like quint and you would be surprised that and and shout out to quint you know solely there's a lot of quints out there there's a lot of kids out there yeah. that are in that 12 you know let's just say middle school age okay yeah Let's and shout, are, out, they, uh, and, shout out Pizza Loving Nerd as well. Yeah, he does an awesome. We just can't awesome go outside channel. and play yeah. like we used to when we were yeah. kids yeah. either. Yeah. But they, but what I'm saying is, is that these 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 youngsters are embracing technology in a good way, because we can go we can go to any shopping mall on the face of the planet. We can see a kid walking around like this. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. That and, drives and, me insane. <laughs> Yeah, me too. But but there but there is but there is another side. phones drive insane. There is another side to people in that age range. They're the people sitting here running their faces into their screen trying to figure out how to get theming to work. They've got they they use one of these every single day like Ben does. They whack, <laughs> they, they, whack they whack themselves in the head for the com for, for the common good and not just their own learning. But information that they can disseminate out to the other yeah. people on the planet when it comes to Linux. So I'll I get something straight, Tim. He's a fifth of your age. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Yeah. sorry. Yeah, um... <laughs> they, hey, boy. You know, the other reason I come on these streams is just because I want to feel good about myself. Yeah. <laughs> With Ben, it's one lumps or two. I, you know, all, all, all kidding aside, um, Tom. Thanks again for the invite. I Absolutely. value. I value I value the friendship that I have with every single one of you guys. You guys are the best on the planet, and I wouldn't ra I would I wouldn't rather be anywhere else. Thank you. Yeah. Does this um, count, Tim, as a good thing to whack? Yeah, your head just, with? it looks it, like it could break, so be careful. It, yeah, yeah. Back yeah. Upstairs. See, you're, you're looking you're looking for something that has a distinctive sound like this. That that's yeah. a distinctive sound. In fact, this should have a little bit more bong to it. Yeah, and it would be perfect. Yeah. I have a, get a frying pan uh, that's upstairs, and that's what I use mainly, but it's not down here. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Ricky, final words for you. All I got to say, pleasure to have me. And everybody in the comments section, we have a whole bunch of people watching. Smash that like button. Support everybody here. All right. Well, let's go ahead and do like we always have to do on this this channel and end with the amazing tradition of feeding a kitty cat so hi cj um, we always have to feed the kitty <laughs> you, no don't moon everybody don't moon the people come here don't moon the people you sit right here and be cute and i'll get you your kitty treats all right 
Oh, boy. They can't hey. gonna want a contract soon. Oh, he already has a contract. Get your paw in there, CJ. Everybody wants to see your paw. Come on, get your paw in there. He's been favoring the face lately. Oh, good. He's back to the paw. That's good. Yeah, I like the paw. Get the face. Get the face. (laughs) I think he missed it. There you go, buddy. All right. Let's do one more. The planet hurt an animal. I don't understand how people abuse animals. (laughs) He's so cute. He's so cute. He's adorable. Yeah. I don't have any pets, unfortunately. I got a dog and two cats. Yeah, how's that uh, peeing situation going? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, if if they're still doing it, by the way, um, orange hey, essential hey. oil. Um, use orange essential oil because cats don't like it. They will avoid your bed. <laughs> I'll do that then. I'll get some of that for sure. Yeah, I actually just All happened right. to read that, and I had some because I use it to make orange seltzer water. So. Cool. Um, that's that. I- does he hate Puppy Linux? No, actually, Walter, CJ's Linux is Puppy Linux. So uh, CJ does use Puppy Linux. That's what he uses. This is distro. This is uh, daily distro. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and wrap up the live stream. I'll stick around and chat with you guys if you guys want, but we're going to wrap this up. So thanks for coming along, guys. Have a look at the links in the description down below and uh, support all these guys on here that have YouTube channels. I know Ricky's got one. Uh, Keep It Techie's got one. Mark, you have a YouTube channel these days? Yes, sir, and I'm getting. Uh, I'm going to shoot some content hopefully tonight. I plan yeah, on if, if you guys want to throw your uh, channels in there, and Quint will yeah. be getting one soon. I don't think Joe or Dan, you guys don't have channels, or do you? I have too much time. I spent too much time watching and being a guest to have there a channel. You so your channel is here, toss. And, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Very good. All right, guys. Well, we will catch you guys later and peace out, all. Bye, y'all. 